Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from the Malts of Scotland, which is an independent bottler here from Germany. Um, Manochmoor, Bourbon Hogshead, cast number MOS 2008, distilled 2010, bottled 2020, even though it's a nine-year-old. Um, I have bottle number 208 of 299, 55.6% alcohol vol by volume. So, whiskey base number 157825. I paid 59 euros for this. So, we're looking at something under 70 euros for a single cask, cask strength, Manoch Moa uh, from a bourbon hogshead and nine years old, which I think is actually a very good price. I'm going to compare it today to something from SMWS. Now, I have received a guest membership here. I've bought 16 bottles from SMWS, and I've decided not to buy any more. Um, in German, there's a long one-hour story about why and so on. They did not really... Um, Convince me. So sorry. But this is um, the bottle 64. 64 is uh, Manoch Dot 116. This was one of 258 bottles from a first... No, I'm sorry. This was from a refill ex-bourbon hogshead with 54.6. The only difference is this has one point less ABV, and it's basically four years older. Now, this does not say refill hogshead, but um, it might just be... Even though when I do look at the color, this is a little bit lighter, even though it's four years older. So I'm not really sure about that. Um, Thomas Evas, he actually founded Malts of Scotland as an independent bottler many, many years ago. I've met him a few times. He has some interesting bottles. They almost always look like this. Sometimes he has some very old stuff that you can't get anymore. And sometimes he has some very new, younger whiskeys that are fairly well-priced. Um, the bottle design, I think, is nice. All the information you need is in the label. And I actually find the nice little um, tin that it comes in here. This is actually um, just all cardboard and then metal bottom and top. Not bad. All right. So uh, every bottle, a benchmark is their slogan there. www.malt-of-scotland.com Now I'm going to compare the two of these. Now, Manoch Moa is not a distiller you get anything from normally. There is a flora and fauna out there, belongs to Diageo, um, but other than that, it's very difficult to get anything. Why? Because this is actually one of those workhorses of the um, single malt Irish, uh, single malt Scottish um, um, whiskey industry. They produce for blends. That's it. Glen Lossy is the distillery that was there first, and then in 1971, um, a new distillery was built beside there, more efficient. And a little bit more of a, um, yeah, just a workhorse. Just make the stuff and get rid of it. Now, the question is, why did they get rid of this cask? Why did they get rid of this cask? There are men, not many casks out there. And so if they do get rid of some casks, it's always the question, why? Is it an outlier? Does it go outside the profile? Or because they had another reason for that? And I will never know. So sorry. So, um, let's nose them. Now, this is not one of those whiskeys that pops. Um, there's not that much going on in the glass, to be honest. There's a little bit of malt, there's a little bit of vanilla, there's a little bit of a um, flowery moment, and I actually got a hint of coconut. The alcohol is fairly well integrated. but there's not really much there. Over here, it's a few years older, 13 versus 9, and it smells a little bit rounder, a little bit smoother, a little bit more vanilla. vanilla. So on the nose, I would prefer the SMWS. Now, this is the problem by Manoch Moa. You will probably have independent bottlers. Unless you have the Florida Fauna series in front of you, that's the only time you'll ever get the chance. Now, um, if I do remember correctly, uh, last year, the year before that, they actually, um, this is the Bible for me at the moment for um, Scotch whiskey. Um, 
they actually released a 25-year-old cast strength in the year 2016. Um, it was distilled 1990, bottled at 53.4%. It was part of the special releases. And I thought there was a different release I, al- I actually also had. The Namanokmoa is a 12-year-old um, flora and fauna normally. An 18-year-old was released in 2009. And um, they now have actually have eight distills since 2013. They produce over um, up to 6 million liters of alcohol a year, which is a lot! <laughs> Hey, wait, just to compare this, I think Akintosh does four point. Let's see if I get this right here. Akintosh does two million. So three times the production of Akintosh. And Akintosh you can find everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's try this. This is more of a summer type of whiskey. There's not much going on here. The alcohol is 55.6%. It's it's there. There's a tiny little bit of a bitter note in that with the alcohol at that, at that percentage point. But still, it's fairly sweet. It's very malt forward. It's a little bit of a... I've never used this note before. A buttery butternut squash. Yep. Also, imagine butternut squash with a little bit of butter on there. No salt, but butter. And that's what I'm getting, a tiny little bit there. Good tasting note. (laughs) I could work for the SMWS, but I don't... Oh, well. No, thanks. Over here. Hmm. Now, the interesting thing is this bottle, the Rave um, Culture, is actually much hotter. And, uh, and then, wah, pepper. Now, I remember not liking this bottle from the, from the very beginning. Um, there, were, there, were, there were seldom a bottle that actually, a bottle that actually convinced me from SMWS. Um, the only bottles that I really enjoyed were Longmorn. And I think any idiot in the world can fill up Longmorn. Um, put it in a first fill bourbon barrel, let it set for 12 years, and fill it up. You don't have to do anything to it. It's beautiful. And that's what those two bottles were that I had for Longmore. Um, okay, sorry, it was 15 years they let it in there for. Um, but still, <coughs> they, you don't touch it. You just leave it in the barrels it came with and just bottle it, and that's perfect Longmore. Here, I'm not really sure about that one. Um No, I think those were the second fill, um, refill hogshead here. One last time, I put some water in it, diluted it down to below 50%, I hope. Mm -hmm. Well, my butternut squash squash is gone. It's a lot sweeter. Did not expect that. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with this whiskey. There's nothing that excites me about this whiskey either. Um, this is going to get a C plus. Now the interesting thing is the price. Fifty nine euros is a very good price for a cast strength whiskey, single cask from a distillery you normally can't get. Um, 55.6%. The only thing that's missing is the years. Imagine this at 14, 18, 21. Now, the only problem is, of course, what we had here. Um, tiny little bit of history. We used to have a lot of hogsheads. A hogshead would be you take the bourbon barrels, you um, actually disassemble them, put them in a container, bring them over to the Spaceside Cooperage, and they would reassemble these hogsheads. Um, they would take out of five barrels, they would make a, no, take them, sorry, they would take the barrels from the United States, from the bourbon, bring them over, and create hogsheads. Five barrels equals four hogsheads. Instead of the 200 some liters, 250. 
And so they'd actually put more staves together in the circle, have new heads and tails. Or the heads, not tails, I'm not at the distilling process. Um, new heads on the barrels, um, a bottom and a top. Um, often made from old staves as well. They'd glue them back together, cut them out, and put them in there, and then bam, you'd have that. Why? Because you want to have a lower ratio between the surface of the wood and the liquid in there. So it can age slower. You reduce the angel share as well. The smaller the cast, the higher the angel share is. And so you reduce the angel share, you allow this whiskey to age in a very slow maturation point, which you need for 20 plus year old whiskeys. Hogshead, bourbon cast, best thing you can do. Now, if you want to do it quick, you put it in a first fill bourbon cast, you put a finish on it, and bam, you have a whiskey that's okay after six to eight years. But if you're looking really for the good stuff, those old hawk heads are really important. Now, the biggest problem we have at the moment in Scotland is um, we don't transport the casks anymore from America um, disassembled. Rather, we just put 400 about into one container. They've been, they're so cheap, the containers now, that it's not worth the manpower to actually disassemble and reassemble the casks in Scotland. And so what we're doing is we're actually just putting everything in first fill bourbon barrels, second fill bourbon barrels, and you'll see less less and less hogsheads being used in the next decade or so. Mm. So unless someone is smart enough to say we still need hogsheads, hogsheads, we'll see about that. All right, so this actually is a very good price for them, value for the money. So I'm going to give this a C on the value for money um, and a C plus actually for taste. All right, thank you very much. Question of the day, Manochmoa, what have you tried? Anything? And second of all, if not, um, have you tried anything Masters of Malt, MOS? And if not, um, the question of the day is, what is your favorite um, hogshead um, matured um, whiskey? Probably a single cast, probably something a little bit more from an independent bottler. But what whiskeys do you know that actually are matured in bourbon hogsheads? Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others. Uh, share this video on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, anything else you're on, the Twitter. Um, feel free to do that, and I thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here. All the best. Bye-bye.